Hey everybody and welcome back to MyJerryBunch.com. This is Pete and I'm going to walk you through making this beautiful ring today. Uh, this is a ring that a customer asked me to model up for them and I'm going to go through the whole process in it and before we get started I want to go over a couple shortcut keys that you should remember. Now these keyboard combinations will help you get through modeling. Shift D for duplicate. Um, when you use Shift D, you can duplicate an object. Control A allows you to align uh, rotation and scale plus other transformations. Control Shift and number pad minus is Boolean difference and Control Shift number pad plus is Boolean union. So try to remember those. It helps your uh, workflow go just a little bit faster instead of using the menu options. Okay, let's get started with this project. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to import a new gem. So I know what gem sizes I'm working with. Um, I'm gonna add in a cushion cut diamond, which is about 6.3 millimeters. We're gonna insert that, and then I'm gonna use this cube here to make the halo head for it. Um, so I'm gonna just model this up and size it uh, along the Z axis, the X and Y axis, and just get it to about the shape that I want it. And here you can see, I'm just kind of maneuvering it around the gemstone that I'll be using. And I do have the dimensions for the halo also. This is actually, uh, I'm making a copy of a ring. So what's nice is I have the ring to work with and I have all the dimensions. So I'm gonna place the uh, halo about where I want it. The next thing I wanna do is use the gem or the jewel craft tool for the cutter. And I wanna make that uh, cut out in the halo head. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I'm going to look at this from the top view, obviously. We're going to start placing the little gems. These are one and a half millimeter diamonds. Uh, they're about approximately. And there are four on either side of the ring and then five on the uh, opposite sides. And what I want to do is just get them all aligned kind of uh, exactly in the same position as the original ring. So I'm just going to move these manually. And once that's done, I can go back, duplicate those and get them in place. So here you can see I've, what I've decided to do is use an array instead of just manually move them. So I've got them equally spaced. Now that I've got that done, I can copy them from either side. And I'm just going to adjust my spacing. And this ring required a lot of tweaking as I went along to make it look like the original one. Once I get those diamonds approximately where I want them, and I can grab one of the arrays, I can duplicate it, rotate it around the uh, Z axis, and then add in a fifth uh, stone using the array modifier. And without using the jewel craft tool to do this, uh, it's going to require me to do a couple little tricks later. So with that done, I'm going to grab that cushion, I'm going to add in the prongs using the jewel craft tool, and I'm going to line these prongs up to approximately where I want them so that they don't interfere. You can use the, uh, the invisible set the invisible tool uh, to see through your model so that you can see like here I'm just adjusting where the prongs are going to go and if they're not interfering with any of the diamonds. So now that I've got that done I've got everything about where I want it. I'm going to grab one of the stones and I am going to use the jewel craft cutter tool. I'm going to start making the holes for the diamonds and here I'm adjusting the top part of the girdle so that it protrudes straight up and then what I'm going to do is just duplicate each of these cutters around to every place where there's a diamond that fits those instead of uh, like i said instead of using the jewel craft tool to create all the cutters i'm actually manually making those it's just a little bit easier in this kind of a situation you can do it either way okay so i've got the cutters on all four sides that looks about good for me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab these grab the halo and i'm going to do the control shift minus which will do the cutout uh, or the boolean difference and i'm going to work my way all the way around and get rid of all the cutters so now that i'm left with just the halo the stones and the four prongs for the cushion cut okay so there's the majority of the head so far what i have to do now is create a little cut tool or a cutter that i'm going to use to actually what you'll see here in a second, I want to create a, a triangular shaped indent in between the diamonds here so that I'm working with, uh, so well actually so we can see the diamonds as we're designing these. Like again, if you know what you have envisioned, you have drawn out, um, it's easier to go ahead and do the modeling here. So I've made a copy of that cutter. I'm just gonna kind of leave it there for now and I'm gonna work with just the one here. And I'm going to start shift D or duplicating it and moving it around to each of the stones. Once I've got that done, I'll duplicate the all four, bring them up to the other side. I'm going to rotate those and then start moving these over for the five 
uh, stone side. And once those are in place, I can grab all five of those, shift D, and move over to the other side. Now that that's done, I can grab those, select my halo head, and do a control shift minus, and that will cut those out of my halo head. It's always a good uh, opportunity to go ahead and set, save your uh, modeling because you never know if Blender is going to crash. Okay, so I've got that done pretty good, and let's take a look at this. I'm going to move this up, and we're going to start working on the ring shank. So to get started with that, I'm going to add in a curved circle, and I'm going to be working with a curve here. So you can see the curve that I'm working with. I'm going to subdivide it so that I get a few more iterations of the line. That way it's just a little easier to manipulate this since it's going to be kind of a, a V-shape going up from the middle of the shank up to the head. So I'm just elongating the size here and I'm trying to adjust it as best I can to get these to work straight down and you can see the points that I'm working I'm just grabbing each point and adjusting it so that I get a straight shank from the side view. From the front view I'm going to add a, a I'm going to actually add in a cylinder. I'm going to make that the size of my inner ring which would be in this case a size seven and a half I believe. And now what I want to do is start adjusting my shank from the side view so that it works its way around the perimeter of the cylinder so that I have the inner dimensions on the curve for my ring shank. Now there's a lot of tweaking with this. Um, sometimes you can adjust both sides like this. Sometimes you can only adjust one side at a time. So take your time. If you do make a mistake, remember control Z is your friend. It will undo the last step you did or command Z on a Mac. So just kind of play with it here and get that ring shank adjusted to about where you want it. So I'm getting close to where I want it. And here from the top view, I'm adjusting the sides over. Now the, the line, I've actually mirrored the curve so that uh, it's mirrored on both sides of the ring shank. If I make changes to one, it's going to make it to both. And what I decided to do is here, go ahead and add an extrusion to my curve modifier to give it a little thickness. And then I add a solidify modifier to this. This gives my band some, some depth. It wasn't quite what I wanted, so I'm actually play with this a little bit and tweak it around. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that mirror modifier now and I'm going to move or work with one side of the ring at a time and get it to, to where I actually want the ring to look. I need to get the thickness and the width of the ring um, exactly how the customer wants it. And again, I'm just going to kind of tweak this a little bit at a time. And it's easy to do with a curve because I don't have to make too many modifications to it. And I can always go and increase its resolution in the end. It's a good idea if you're not familiar with working with curved objects, especially if you use the extrusion and a solidify modifier, um, to go play with those and you can make those kind of bend and twist any way you want. Here you can see I'm just twisting or modifying the ring shank just to make sure I'm fitting the circumference of that cylinder. I'm using the cylinder only as a reference. Now here I'm adding in the underside of the ring uh, the, the, this is actually part of the gallery um, you'll see in a minute here as i get this moved around i'm adjusting this curve this is a, a path a nerve path and this path allows me to kind of make a little insert for the gallery and on this particular ring we have kind of a crisscross from one side to the other and then a reversed they kind of wrap like a ribbon so i'm just going to twist this around that cylinder to give myself a good good show on the left side and then we're going to bend it back up to the right side and I'm just going to keep playing with it until it looks about right. One thing to consider um, as you're merging these objects you want to make sure that they are uh, blending into themselves so that you don't have any jagged edges sticking out of your model. Now I'm making the opposite bend in this so there's a like a ribbon effect to this particular ring you'll see in a minute and one of these gallery lines goes behind the other so basically just duplicating the first one twisting it around and then kind of modifying its path so that i get it to bend and form the way i want it to now 
Okay, so I'm almost there. Now I have to move this over a little bit because I need to align it up to uh, the middle so that the left side of the ring shank is on the middle line of our 3D workspace. And you'll see why that's in a bit. And now I just need to go ahead and tweak all these other curves so that they are positioned and bent correctly. And remember, you can play and move these things around as much as you want. You can always con command or control Z to undo those changes. So don't be afraid to go and play with these and, and kind of work with them the way you want. And once I get it to the point where I'm liking it and it's wrapped, I can go ahead and save my workload again and we'll just continue working on this. And I'm just going to make some little tiny adjustments from one side to the other. And I'm trying to look at this from the, from the side view to make sure that I've got the curvature correct, that my ribbons kind of line up perfectly. And then I'm just going to go and examine this one more time, and I think it looks pretty good. A couple more tweaks. Now I'd like to get these ribbons as close to the corners as possible, but without protruding from the side of the head or the halo. Now here you can see I'm working in the top of that curve that we're using for the ring shank and I have to figure out a way to get rid of that. Um, eventually what I'm going to do is increase the resolution, convert it to a mesh. And then what I'll do here is I'll use a cube to make a Boolean difference cut in the top of that shank. So now that that shank is kind of converted to a mesh, I can actually cut it out. So from the front view, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to cut that out. And you can see now the top of that ring shank is kind of gone. And uh, if I have to make any changes, I can command or control Z, undo them, and move that around until I get it positioned where I want to. And then we'll do it again. So get that there. And it looks like it's not going to interfere with anything. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'll go ahead and do the uh, Boolean difference. Okay, so now I'm converting everything to a mesh, all those three ribbons. I'm duplicating them, and then I'm going to duplicate that ring shank, flip it around in the Z-axis 180 degrees, and that way I can get the uh, opposite side of the ring that matches perfectly with the first side that we've been modeling. Just like so. Okay, now merge those two by doing a control shift plus, which is a Boolean union. And there's some things I need to do to this because we've got some merged vertices that are a little off. So you can see that I've got some kind of weird lines protruding from the inside of that ring shank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these vertices and I'm going to use the merge tool to merge them by distance. And then merging them by distance will bring them together, kind of smooth out our model and get rid of any like weird looking lines or model errors that you have when you uh, merge a couple objects using the Boolean tool, especially if they don't quite match up perfectly. Look, the nice thing about jewelry is it is small. So when I 3D print this, I don't have to worry too much about any, you know, erroneous weird looking lines because they're going to get hidden during 3D printing. Okay, so I'm going to grab one of these edges here and I'm going to turn that into a curve object so that I can have my diamonds flow around that. Now, unfortunately, I, I got interrupted and I forgot to film that. But what I did was I used uh, that edge that I created a moment ago and I used it as a path by converting it to a curve. And then I just modeled the diamonds around it or I had the diamonds flow using the jewel craft tool. Uh, and that would be the distribute on curve feature that's in the jewel craft tool. Okay, here you can see I'm using the micro cutter to cut out uh, the openings for the diamonds. And I'm using a round cutter because that matches the ring that I'm, I'm copying. And what I'm going to do is just get those sized correctly to where I want them. I'm going to duplicate those and then mirror them on the X and the Y axis so that I get four of those. And we'll just select those seven items at a time and we'll Boolean difference those against the ring shank. And voila.
they're all cut out. Now, in addition to that, I have to use a micro cutter on these also because I need to add in um, a little micro edge in between the diamonds. So here you can see I'm using a triangular shaped micro cutter and I am going to do the exact same thing, but in between the diamonds instead of over the diamonds. And again, I'm going to duplicate one of those and bring it down a little bit farther. We'll rotate it. You can rotate this along the normals or you can rotate this in uh, uh, global mode. It's up to you. It's easier to do along the normal mode. And once those are done, I will select those and mirror them along the X and Y axis so that I have duplications on both sides. Then I can go back and select those and do a Boolean difference against the ring shank. And we get those little micro cuts in between each of the diamonds. Looks good so far. Okay, a couple more things I have to do. I'd like to smooth out the corners, um, but before we do that, I have actually, I have to make some fake diamonds that go along those two ribbons on either side of the ring shank. So here you can see what I'm doing is I'm using the jewel craft tool. I placed a diamond, added heads. I turned it into a mesh and combined it. And now I'm gonna use a box to, or a cube to cut out the bottom half of that. And basically what I have is a flat imitation head. Now I can use the magnet tool in Blender and I can align that to the surface of whatever I'm using. And then with the, the Shift D, I can duplicate those and kind of move those along uh, the lines of the ribbons that I want to have those fake diamonds appear. And once you've selected one, you could rotate it so that it rotates along uh, the, in this case would be the X axis, kind of curve those around and make them look a little nicer. Now I've got five or six in the front ribbon and we're gonna put five in the back ribbon and we're gonna duplicate those to the other side. So I'm gonna select those and I will uh, set them the origin to the center. We'll duplicate those and rotate those around to the opposite side. And the next step is to I actually grab those and then use a Boolean union uh, configuration to join those to our band or our ring shank. Okay, so here you can see what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to remesh the head and uh, the shank a little bit. This will, give, this will give the model a little bit more definition. And then I can go in and use the sculpting tool to kind of blend that together a little bit and give myself a soft edge. Again, when we go ahead and do the 3D printing, we're also going to get a soft edge because in this case, resin is kind of going to blend in and anti-alias itself into the model so here i'm just going to smooth it out a little bit of that and after casting this should come out pretty well by the time we go through the print process and the casting process it'll be a little bit smoother and then we can buff it out so the sculpting tool if you haven't worked with it it's a good idea to go play with it before you actually start modeling don't get to you know something that you've spent hours on modeling and then go and sculpt it and destroy it go play first with the sculpting tool and get used to using it it's it's pretty easy and you're only going to use a couple different options in the sculpting to do something like this okay so my ring looks pretty well done now it's time to uh, get this all joined together so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use uh, the boolean union tool and i'm going to join these pieces together and i'm just double checking my models to make sure that all my normals are straight so that all my faces are pointing in the right direction and i can go ahead and hide it and take a look at it if i want to now I'm going to do a Boolean union and now my ring shank is all one piece. And to test this, I'm going to export it as an STL file. And by doing that, I can bring it into my 3D slicing software and I can look for any errors in the 3D slicing software, anything that I might have an issue with if I have to go ahead and 3D print this. Now I'm not actually going to 3D print this because the customer is going to send this somewhere else to have printed. But here we go, we've got this beautiful ring shank, and that's how I model it, guys. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Hit that little subscription thing. And if you want to get a notification every time I upload, go ahead and do that. Hit that little bell. Thanks for watching. Take care.